Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, call hello, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shabba, Hashem, Rakarpadash. Once again, double honors go out to the apostles, bishops, and elders, great millstone, who continue to this day to push this truth, honest, and sincerity. Salutations also to the Akim out there on the highways and the byways across the four corners of the earth doing the same. All right? Trying to wake up the remaining, hopefully, left. So today, uh, I'm going to play a video uh, and this is one of these videos that so-called Christians put together but for this purpose I'm going to use it to prove a point and that is all of these stories that are in the Bible for instance this first one John 9th chapter about the blind man and Yahweh Shai and him uh as he passed by, you know, and he asked a question to his disciples, you know, whose sin was it? Was it this man's parents or was it him well, for the reason that he's blind? All right. So this guy, I'm going to go ahead and play it here. And then I'll come back and read this. All right. So here we go. Well, he believes the Bible is true, right? Wrong. Here are discoveries that prove the Bible is true. Number one, the Pool of Siloam. The Pool of Siloam is one of the most famous passages in all of the Bible. Jesus notices as a blind man sat there, so he kneels down and gets down to his level. And then Christ does something rather unusual. He spits on the ground and then creates a sort of clay with his fingers. He takes that clay and he anoints it on the blind man's eyes and says, go, wash this pool, the pool of Siloam. The blind man obeys and immediately those blind eyes suddenly see. But here's what's interesting. Until very recently, skeptics used to say, where is this pool of Siloam? It doesn't even exist. Well, in 2004, a large drainage pipe Jerusalem needed fixing, so construction workers began to dig the ground to try and solve the problem. As they dug, they noticed something very peculiar. They saw some large stone steps, so they called two archaeologists, Ronnie Reich and Eli Shukran. And when these two men saw what was beneath the ground, as they dug further with their archaeologists, they uncovered multiple steps and a pool which was 225 feet long. But how do we know that this pool is the Pool of Siloam? Well, there are two clues. The first one is this. It was found in the City of David, next to the Temple Mount, exactly as the scripture tells us. And the second clue is this. Right at the end of this pool was Hezekiah's tunnel, which is something that King Hezekiah had dug out as an irrigation system. Again, just like the Bible tells us. Number two, Pilate's inscription. It wasn't that long ago. All right, so let's read the actual account. I apologize for the, uh, the video, the way my phone is. It's, uh, um, it's not going to play. That's as big as I can get it. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, it says, Yehoshua heals a man born blind. This is John chapter 9. It says, and as Yehoshua passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents? that he was born blind. Yahweh Shai answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of the Most High should be made manifest in him. For I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work, meaning he knew he had a limited time. All right? And as long, and that's also a warning to us, all right, do the work now while there's time to do the work, because shortly, you know, the day's coming where you're not going to be able to do it. So get it all in now. All right. Verse 5. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Salaam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came sinks. See, everything has a spiritual connection. All right. Eight, the neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat, at the, sat and begged? 
9 some said this is he others said he is like him but he said I am he therefore said they unto him how were thine eyes open he answered and said a man that is called Yahawashah made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me go to the pool of Siloam and wash and I went and washed and I received sight then said they unto him where is he he said I know not they brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind and it was a Sabbath day when Yahweh made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon my eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of the Most High, Yahweh, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. All right. <laughs> 17. They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him, that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him, that he had been blind and received his sight, until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son, who ye say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him, he shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Hamashach Yahushai, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind, and he said unto him, Give the Most High the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? How open he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore will ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that the Most High spake unto Moses, As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. 30. The man answered and said unto him, and unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know that the Most High heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of the Most High, he doeth his will, him he heareth. All right, so, <laughs> so he got these old uh, Pharisees, and the thing you have to understand about these individuals were they were in the power seat. They did not want that power to go away. They had made deals with the oppressor, the Romans. All right, so they enjoyed the the fixings, the the fringe benefits, if you will, of their position. All right, so they don't want that to go away. It's just same thing, same thing today with these so-called preachers. All right, they got this 501c3 charter. Uh, they don't want to give it up. They're getting tax-free money, and that's the deal. I believe, I believe that came out of the Johnson administration, as in L LBJ. All right, who I believe was crypto Jew. I know definitely that his wife was a so-called Jew, all right? So you gotta understand, all these programs that were set up during his great society administration, they did tremendous harm to our people because a lot of the idiots that were our so-called leaders, they bought into the so-called integration scheme, all right? And that's exactly what it was. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, continuing on, let's go to the next one. This is the man who officiated the trial of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he looked at Jesus' life, he said, I find no guilt in this man, because Jesus was the only one to be morally perfect. But after 1961, no one would dare question the reality of this real person, Pontius Pilate. Maria Teresa was digging in an old ancient Roman theater in Caesarea, Israel, when she found a limestone rock. 
Carved into the rock read these words to the divine Augusti, this Tiberian Pontius Pilate, prefect of Judea, has dedicated this. It was later dated to make sure it was totally legit, and the time period came back as AD 26 to AD 36, the year when Pontius Pilate was active. But hey now, it's also worth noting that there are also some ancient bronze pilot coins which have also been discovered and what they do they date back to AD 29. Number three, the Tel Dan Stan. Alright, so here goes the account with Pilate. And this is after, of course, Judas's betrayal. Alright, uh, and I'll go on from there. This is Matthew chapter 27, verse 3. It says, Then Judas which had betrayed him when he saw that he was condemned repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and elders saying I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood and they said what is that to us see thou to it and he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself and the chief priest took the silver pieces and said it is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood and they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore, that field was called the field of blood unto this day. And let me say this, although it might seem unrelated, it is not. Where you have here where he knew he had fucked up. I'm talking about Judas. I'm going to use that as an example of where it talks about Revelation 13 and 16. And there's a stark warning there. Do not take the... MOTB. All right, you all know what I'm talking about. If you do so, you fucked up. You've already fucked up. It doesn't matter if you decide to take it out after that. You've already committed the act. All right, uh, implied consent. All right, so <clears throat> without even saying anything, it's just the action itself. You've already committed. So guess what? Revelation 14 and 9 is for you. All right, nine and ten is for you. All right, so <laughs> just as an example, so he knew he had fucked up. I'm talking about Judas, so he tried to give it back. Too late. All right, and it says, um, verse nine. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value, and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed them. And Yahushua stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Yahushua said unto him, Thou sayest. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him to never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. 15. Now at that feast the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Yahushai, which is called Hamashiach? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Yahushua. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, But what shall I do then with Yahushua, which is called Hamashiach? They all said unto him, Let him be crucified. And you wonder why we're in the condition that we're in today. These same spirits coming back. All right, they're still here. They're here. They're here. All right, 23. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. And the pilot saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made. He took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. See, this is another prime example because we're in the same situation now where our oppressor, the same Edomites, the same nation that was ruling over us back then, 
again is rolling over his mouth. And as our oppressor, they've got certain methods of how to deal with us. And just as he was, I'm talking about Pontius Pilate as an Edomite was in this lofty position, and he more or less like, you know, I ain't got nothing to do with this. This is between you all. This is how Jake does this at this day. It's just cannibalizes their own, you know. Uh, and again, you just see these Edomites, they just sit back and let Jake just fuck each other up. And they sit back and laugh. I mean, it's the same old, same old, same old. That's why Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 uh, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's so prevalent in the scripture. All right. It really is. <clears throat> all right. So then it goes on um, 25. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Again, you wonder why things go on in the hood like they do it's a curse 26 then released he Barabbas unto them and when he had scourged Jehoshaphat he delivered him to be crucified and then they go on to mock him and you know make sport of him more or less alright so yeah and you wonder why like I said <laughs> oh boy yep this is our people so let's continue with the next one. Now most biblical scholars will all agree that this is the most earth-shattering find out of all of the archaeological discoveries in biblical history. I wonder if I asked you, apart from Jesus Christ, who is the greatest king in the Bible? Who would you say? I think most of you would say David. King David. Here is this king who had a vast, huge, expansive kingdom. If you said Here Solomon, you wouldn't be wrong either. So great, he was the greatest warrior. Here is this king who, out of his very lineage, came the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet, for many years, there were claims, there were false claims swimming around the world that David was just a fantasy character, that this man David did not exist. And again, the Bible cannot be historical. Accurate. But in 1993, an archaeologist discovered the Canaanite inscription in Tel Dan, northern Israel. The stone, which had been written in Aramaic, has been traced back to the 9th century BC. And the likely candidate, the person behind this inscription, is likely to be King Hesiod, as it describes his triumphant victory over Jehoram, the son of Ahab, who was from the house of David. This showdown is actually also recorded in the Bible in 2 Kings chapter 2. So here we are. Here you have it. Here is an extra biblical document, a source outside of the Bible, which proves that David was a real person. Number four. See, and you have to understand there's a more sinister reason why uh, these Christians in particular, people in general, uh, refuse to believe this because in Christianity Christianity is not in the scriptures all right as taught uh, there's something called secessionism all right and in order for secessionism secessionism Salaki, or Christianity as they teach to be um, to exist Israel has to be done away with when Israel is not done away with in the Holy Scriptures. See, that's that. Um, um, well, let's get let's get this because uh, <clears throat> again, hold on, hold on. Yeah, you're going to find out there's a, a lot, there was a lot of deception on these Edomites' part. All right. Here goes the genealogy. Well, that's Chronicles, but hold on. 
we might just have to do it that way because uh, here is the lineage in Christianity they don't talk about the lineage as much because they believe in the spiritual Israelites that's my point uh, and that's just not true this whole thing from the beginning until the end it's in the scriptures that line that continuation from Adam on down that line all right and when you understand inheritance, heritage, inheritance, yeah, it has to be. It's a bloodline. It's not no such thing as a the only spiritual Israelite would be actual Israelite of that bloodline. So we go from Adam to Abraham. Starts out in verse 1, 1 Chronicles. Adam, Sheth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalaleo, Jared, Henoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, Shem, Ham, and Jeff. Alright? And out of those three sons, you get the picture. I'm just going to skim on down, get your sons of, uh, of uh, Japheth, Gomer. We start with Gomer. And then you got Ashkenaz. When you understand that these are Japheths, Japheth is not the white man. These are your, what you would call today, that occupied Europe before the so called white man, the Edomites. Uh, who come much later, I might add. Uh, Ashkenaz, these are the people that you would call today Pacific Islanders that were run out of their land because of war. Uh, your uh, uh, native Australians, your Aborigines, uh, New Zealand, places like that. These are, you know, Tahiti, all the Hawaiians, these are Japhites not the so-called white man. So you have Gomer, his son, Ashkenaz, Rephah, Togomar, Jawan, you have Elisha, his son, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. Then you got Ham, all right? You have Cush, which modern-day Cushites are Ethiopians. Uh, also are your uh, Eritreans, of those, you know, of those kind. You have Mizram, Guess who those people? Those of you will become your Egyptians, all right? And then you have put Northern Africa again, uh, and Canaan. And then Cush had what? Seba and Havilah and Sapta, Rama and Saptica, and the sons of Rama, Sheba and Dedan. And Cush begat Nimrod. That's uh, Genesis 11th chapter, all right? That was the first Babylon, all right? He began to be mighty among the earth. He was known as a mighty hunter. And then you get Mizraim, which I said would begin. Those are the Egyptians, all right? It was the Greeks who called them Egypt, all right? Who called that land Egypt. The biblical, they're Mizraim, all right? And they begat Ludim and Anamim and Lahabim and Naphtuhim. And then you have Pathrushim and Kosluhim, of who came the Philistines. The Philistines are Hamites. They are not Arabs. Those people over there, occupying that land now are not uh, what they call themselves Palestinians which goes back to the Philistines they are not the original all right in Keth Thorim and then Canaan begat Zidon his firstborn in Heth and you get the Jebusites and these are the ones that uh, when Israel and uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7 at the very top of that it tells you when you go into these lands you're not supposed to all right, take on the customs, and you got Jebusites, and you know all these other people: Amorites, Girgashites, all right, the Hivites, Arkites, the Senites, Ar uh, Arvadites, Zemarites, and the Hamathites, the sons of Shem, which we come out of. We were never, we were never Hamites, all right, and that was thus the the great deception. I didn't want to get too far involved into this, but might as well, because. <laughs> People have been lied to. The sons of Shem, Elam, present day, those are your East Indians. And they know they're Elam. All right? And Ashur, and our Foxide, and Lud. All right? Aram, Uz, Hul, Gether, and Meshech. And our Foxide begat Shelah, and Shelah begat Eber. This is your line where, because Eber, you know, where you get to eventually your, your Hebrew. All right, and that the evil were born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg, because in his days the earth was divided. That's what his name means. 
and his brother's name was Jockton. Again, we're continuing this, this line through here. And Jockton begat al Madad and Shelaf and Hazar Mavak and Zerah. And you go down and down and down, and you get Eber, Peleg, and Ryu, Sirug, Nahor, Terah. And then you have Abram. And his name would eventually become Abraham, as in the father of many nations. And that's not talking about everybody across the whole earth. It's talking about from his loins. All right. <clears throat> Simple as that. So these churches are set up to deceive you. Like I said, most of this, as you learn it now, comes out of that so-called great, great society and all these programs. And that was set up for our destruction to keep us off kilter. All right, everything was done to try to keep us from becoming a nation again, as it says in Psalms 83. So let's continue on. Like I said, uh, now you're coming with all these uh, sites being dug up to confirm, all right, what the Bible has said all along. And the elites know this. It's your everyday citizens, especially the so-called Christians. They don't get it, all right? And let's make something else clear. Like I said, this is a bloodline. It doesn't matter. These all these other uh, nationalities, these other nations, it's not for them anyway. Your so-called Chinese, that's Moab. They come out of uh, Genesis 19 chapter. They are uh, products of uh, incest. You know, the daughters of Lot, what they did. So there you get your Chinese and your so-called Japanese it's <laughs> it's so simple it's so simple that's why people don't believe it because they believe all these uh, incredible explanations by the so-called white man you know because all the lies he's told and he's supposed to be so smart and so wise and he's the exact opposite all right so let's continue Nobody believes the Bible is true, right? Wrong. Here are five archaeological I'm so sorry, I must have hit something. Hold on. Let me see. Like I said, I can't blow this up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I hope this. Uh, why did they do that? Number one, the Pool of Siloam. The Pool of Siloam is one of the most famous passages in all of the Bible. Jesus notices there's a blind man sat there, so he kneels down and gets down onto his level, and then cries. You realize that it is a rational book written at a real historical. I'm, I'm so lucky. Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying, "Come on, Joe, that's not." To date, all the way to date, all the way back to AD 50, it's in scripture, and it's believed to date all the way. Victory over Jehoram, the son of there we go. All right. Was from the house of David. This showdown is actually also recorded in the Bible in 2 Kings chapter 2. So here we are. Here you have it. Here is an extra biblical document, a source outside of the Bible, which proves that David was a real person. Number four, the Erastus engraving. The Bible says in Romans 16, verse 23, Gaius, my host, and the host of the whole church, greets you. Erastus, the treasurer of the city, greets you and quarters a brother. We actually only meet this person, Erastus, a few times in the Bible, but it is believed that this man who was a treasurer was also part of the 72 who Jesus sent out in Luke 10. Now, take a look at this. In 1929, an archaeologist discovered this inscription, and it's believed to date all the way back to AD 50. It reads, Erastus, in return for his A dealership, laid this pavement at his own expense. Okay, for me personally, the fact that this pavement stone was found in Corinth, the place where Erastus was a civil servant, and the fact that Erastus was a treasurer, meaning he had a bit of spare cash in his pocket, so he really could afford to lay down a pavement, which is something that I'm guessing you and I probably couldn't afford to do. The fact that all of this came together, that really sells it to me, and I personally believe this is the same Erastus that 
the Apostle Paul refers to several times in his letters. But over to you, what do you think? Do you think this is the same man? And do you think that this inscription helps sort of give credibility to the fact that the Bible really was writing about real people who existed at a real time and not just fictitious characters like the skeptic or the atheist might accuse us of? Number five, Mars Hill. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, come on, Joe, that's not an archaeological discovery. And you're right, it's not. But it does prove the point I was trying to make earlier. This is not a fake place. We're not talking about Charlie Brown and his best friend, Barney the Dinosaur, who are walking in the land of Nod. And we're talking about real people in real places at a real historical time. The Bible says, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men are... Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. And some of you think we Christians are too superstitious. But do you notice? Athens is a real place. Some of you watching this video live in Athens. Some of you watching this video have stood on the real hill, the Mars Hill. These are real times that happened. And many people think the people writing the Bible, they ate something a bit sketchy and it altered their mind. But if you read it, if you really take the time to read this book, you'll realize that it is. A and that's all we've been telling you people out there. You have to read these this for yourself, all right? Especially Jake. Jake has been so taken in with Christianity, all right? And that, I'm going to keep it, you know, that BS, and that's what it is. Uh, they just can't see and we understand there's a reason they can't see because they've been purposely blinded not everyone is supposed to get this unlike what Christianity implies everyone is not supposed to get this and we're talking about Israelites here especially alright so therefore who cares about the rest of the world it doesn't matter all right. The only concern is the nation of Israel. Always has been, always will be. That's it. Now, don't get caught up in the color thing because, like I said, this is all spiritual. You've got to understand one of the curses for the Israelites, they were scattered abroad to all nations. Why? As punishment. You want to be like all nations? So I'm going to strip you of everything and I'm going to cast you amongst them. And guess what? As far as biology goes, if after generation of generation of generation of generation of producing offspring with somebody that doesn't normally look like you, all right, as long as that male bloodline continues, it doesn't matter what the person looks like. And that's what we're trying to get uh, to make people understand because they're so caught up on color because of this idiot that's running the world now. He did these things, all right put the emphasis on skin color and he has not that's another clue as to who he is all right read you have to read pray for the understanding all right and if the holy spirit deals with you then you'll get it but because of this guy the suppressor that's over us he keeps emphasizing you have to go to school in fact you have to go to his schools you have to get his uh, uh, accreditations. You have to get all these degrees that, that he gives you. He determines if you're smart or not. You don't get it? This was never, under this oppressive system, this was never about our salvation. We were brought over here to serve slavery. And two people get caught up on, well, we're not getting whipped and we're not in chains anymore and they think slavery was over. No. Actually, this is much worse, all right, because you knew you were in slavery then. People now, because of all the mind games, all right, like the saying goes, the best slave is the one who doesn't know he's a slave. Aha. Uh -huh. Now he's trying to change things up again because, again, he knows he has but a short time as Revelation 12 and 12 goes, so he wants to extend his rule. So now, all this freedom you had with, you know, paper currency and coins and all that, that's going to be 
a thing of the past. Biden signed this bill back in March. All right, he's pretty much given sovereignty over to, uh, you know, the EU, NATO, and all those other, you know, because it's one, it's the elite bankers that run this world. All right, the politicians, fuck them, they don't mean a damn thing. They have to do what they're told. It's always been that way. All right, the earth was given into the hand of the wicked. All right, that's Job 9 and 24. And that's who rules this place, the wicked. Malachi, first chapter, verses 1 through 4. 4 being the point. All right? This is who rules over us. This is why you get Jake to get shot 60 times and nothing is done. Or to get choked out by the police. These, again, go back specifically to what I read uh, in Matthew. What did we do? Matthew 27. It's also a brief... Uh, account of that in uh, Acts uh, 3 and 13 alright it just doesn't go into the detail but this is what we did give us Barabbas crucify the Lord may his blood be upon us and our children and you wonder why things are the way they are with us because we're under the curses still nobody else and you'd be surprised the number of people that are not from dumbed down America that know this now we've talked to several people from like France uh, and other places around the world they know we're the Israelites but you got these jailhouse pieces of shit these grimy niggers that want to you know usually they're Muslim so called that's not a nation in fact that's uh Ishmael's bullshit. It ain't got nothing to do with Jake. But in any case, let's continue on. Britain at a real historical time on this earth, and these were real people, just like you and just like me. Now, listen to me. I believe if you met the real Paul, the same Paul who preached on Mars Hill, I believe he'd say that Which did not look like you. Let's read that in uh, Salak I have to geek. go back to the uh, here we go I think you know God exists. I think you know Romans because he's reading the NIV version uh, let's go Romans first chapter let's see. here it is Romans chapter 1 verse 20 it says for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen if you would but open your eyes you can see this being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. What, what, what does Esau say? Now this is as a result of a big bang. All right? <laughs> so that they are without excuse. All right? Because that when they knew the Most High, they glorified him not as the Most High, and neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. We went over this at camp uh, Saturday. All right, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. This is why First Corinthians first chapter, starting at uh, eighteen, says what it says. Let's go real quick. Uh, let's see. First Corinthians one. This is why all that degree stuff doesn't mean anything this is for it is written I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent 20 where is the wise where is the scribe where is the disputer of this world have not the most high made foolish the wisdom of this world that's why people in Christianity don't know anything my personal litmus test I say okay break down uh, Genesis first chapter <laughs> 21 for after that is the wisdom of the most high the wisdom by wisdom knew not the most high it pleased the most high by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe that's why we're out there on the highways and byways 
All right. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. And it's not talking about the heathen nations. It's talking about those Jews that were acting as heathen. All right. The Israelite foreigners that were scattered abroad to other lands and they took on the customs of the other lands. That's why in the regular Bible, we have to call it that now because things were taken out. They took out the Apocrypha because the Apocrypha explains that it was never talking about anybody else outside of the Jews, as they put it, or the Israelites. It was always talking about the Israelites, but during the Greek captivity, this is where the Israelites went off and they started taking on the customs of the Greeks. That's what it's talking about. So they purposely put Greek and not Helen. Because if you look up Helen, it tells you there's just Jews that took on Greekish customs. That's all it is. So that was purposely done. And then they took the rest of it out because it tells you who the wicked is. It tells you who the devil is as pertains to a certain group of people on this earth. Because you have if you ever read Ecclesiastes, it tells you it's a time for this, it's a time for that. But you have righteousness. And if you have righteousness, you have to have wickedness. You have up, you have down, you have left, you have right. That's just the way it is. You can't have one without the other. All right. So let's go on back. Said you are without excuse when you look around all the design, all the beauty. You've got to say there is a creator who made all of this. So why? Why do you ignore this factual book? Why do you try and push it in the corner and never think about it? Why do you never ever want to find out who this man, Jesus Christ, is? Why will you do anything, anything? I mean, you can read, you know, if you care to watch, that's, that's the point because he's going into, you know, the JC and we don't do that. Uh, he's coming for a so-called Christian point of view, but I just thought I would use the first part of that because it goes into things that affirm and confirm, all right, the Holy Scriptures because a lot of people, ah, it contradicts itself, uh, blah, 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 because ultimately they don't want to do the things and I'm talking about Jake, all right? I'm talking about our people, because they're the worst. It tells you that uh, Ezekiel third chapter, uh, Jeremiah goes into it as far as our people. Uh, it got so bad with him in chapter nine, Jeremiah ninth chapter, uh, verses two and three, he said he wants to be anywhere else, I'm paraphrasing, uh, that our people aren't, all right? And that's true to this day. Look at our people, they just, uh, what they've managed to turn our people into. And you have to say willingly so because our people take all this garbage in. I mean, this rap music, that, that's just some atrocious shit. I can't stand this shit, all right? And by and large, it's the people that are pretending to be us that are doing it, all right? Because what, the so-called Jews own all these uh, record companies and shit all right and you want to talk about some slavery i think you need to read up on uh some of these music contracts <laughs> you thinking because you see these people with lavish houses and uh you know high class cars and all this shit no the motherfuckers are miserable you know hey so with that i think it's tended for the, to go this long but uh yeah so you know, you have so many things, these archaeologists, and this has been going on for a while. This is nothing new. They've always known, the elites, but there's certain things they don't tell uh, the general public that they've dug up. And they know those people over there in, uh, on those walls were dark-skinned people. All right, so <laughs> with that, hey, uh, until the next video, hey, Shalom.